Okay, so today is lesson 45. God is the mind in which I think. And we're going to go ahead and pray in. So I just surrender this day by tucking my chin and bowing our heads and just knowing that we are one with God. This light, this love, this joy, this peace, these thoughts of God are our thoughts today. And we surrender all of the alternative thoughts, all of the fear thoughts, all of the anxiety, all of the concerns, all of the to-dos, all of the condemnations, all of the judgments, so that we can sink into the loving thoughts of God. And so I do surrender this day and I ask the Holy Spirit to continue to assist us in letting go of these alternate thinking so that we can come to the altar of God that is the mind of God that, re, re, that exists within our minds that we have complete access to today. And I give thanks for the perfect Holy Communion that happens because of this. And I release these words into the powerful energy of God's love that makes all of this so. And I let it be. Amen. So today we are doing lesson 45, God is the mind in which I think. Today's idea holds the key to what your real thoughts are. They are nothing that you think you think, just as nothing that you think you see is related to vision in any way. There is no relationship between what is real and what you think is real. Nothing that you think are your real thoughts or resemble your real thoughts in any respect. Nothing that you think you see bears any resemblance to what vision will show you. You think with the mind of God. Therefore, you share your thoughts with him as he shares his thoughts with you. So there's this holy communion going on if we're open to it. They are the same thoughts because they are the thoughts by thought by the same mind. To share is to make alike or to make one. Nor do the thoughts you think with the mind of God leave your mind because the thoughts do not leave their source. Therefore, your thoughts are in the mind of God as you are. They are in your mind as well, where he is. As you are part of his mind, so are your thoughts part of his mind. So I shared this story this morning. I'm just going to stop for a second to share this story because I think it's helpful. We'll see. So my husband and I were at the beach one day with our oldest son, Owen, and he was three years old. And we were passing him back and forth um, in the water. And all of a sudden, out of the blue, there, this huge wave came, and it swept Owen away. And it pummeled both of us. And so we got up out of the wave after finding our footing, and neither of us had Owen. And we looked at each other, and we were like, oh, my God. And I looked around the huge ocean, and I was like, oh, my God. I don't know where he is. So it's that horrible moment. It was a horrible moment in my life. But all of a sudden, out of the corner of my eye, I saw this little hand pop up for just a second, and it was pretty far away. And I was like, oh my God, there he is. And I knew I had to get to him before another wave came. So I started running, and if you, you know, running in water is not easy, but I started running, and I got to him, and I pulled him out of the water, and we got him to the beach, and we were celebrating, of course, because sometimes this story doesn't have a happy ending. And we said to him, Owen, oh, you know, I said to him, like, Owen, oh, what were you thinking when you were under the water? Because, again, he was three, and he, I was wondering, like, what was the experience for him? And he said, I was thinking about how to get on top of the water. <laughs> we started laughing. Um, and the reason I'm telling this story is because is we could surrender into the thoughts of God. We struggle and struggle and struggle and struggle against God, but we could surrender into it. So it's that kind of a thing where we, you know, we're, we're, we're always thinking about how we can think outside of God, but we can never think outside of God. We are always immersed in God. But unlike the story of drowning, when we're immersed in God, it's good that we can surrender and go with the flow of God. So this is what the lesson is teaching us today. It says our three to five minute practice periods for today will take the same general form that we use in applying yesterday's idea. We will attempt to leave the real and seek for the real. Leave the unreal and seek for the real. We will deny the world in favor of truth. We will not let the thoughts of the world hold us back. We will not let the beliefs of the world tell us what tell us what God will have us do is impossible. Instead, we will try to recognize that only what God will have us do is possible. So again, here's something I always say, if God brings you to it, God brings you through it, and you don't have to worry about anything. We will also try to understand that only with what God would have us do is what we would want to do. So 
God knows us, and everything that God would have us do is something that we would actually delight in doing. And we will also try to remember that we cannot fail in what He would have us do, so that we have all of the resources to do what God's will is. This is every, there is every reason to feel confident that you will succeed today. It is the will of God. Begin the exercise today by repeating the idea to yourself. Close your eyes as you do so, and then spend a few short periods in thinking a few relevant thoughts of your own, keeping the idea in mind. After you've added some four or five thoughts of your own to the idea, repeat it again and tell yourself gently, my real thoughts are in my mind and I would like to find them. Then try to go past the unreal thoughts that cover the truth in your mind and reach for the eternal, under all the senseless thoughts and mad ideas with which you have cluttered up your mind are the thoughts that you thought with God in the beginning. They are there in your mind now, completely unchanged. They will always be in your mind, exactly as they always were. Everything you have thought since then will will change, but the foundation on which it rests is wholly unchanged. And here Jesus is using foundation with a capital F, telling us the foundation on which all of our thoughts rest are the thoughts of God, and the thought of God is the only is only love. So we are resting all of our thoughts on the thoughts of love. In this foundation, towards which the exercises for today are directed, here is your mind joined with the mind of God. Here are your thoughts, one with his. For this kind of practice, only one thing is necessary. Approach it as you would an altar dedicated in heaven to God, the Father, and to God the Son. For such is the peace you are trying to reach. You will probably be unable as yet to realize how high you are trying to go. Yet even with the little understanding you have already gained, you should be able to remind yourself that there are. this is no that this is no idle game, but an exercise in holiness and an attempt to reach the kingdom of heaven. In the shorter exercise periods for today, try to remember how important it is to you to understand the holiness of the mind that thinks with God. Take a moment or two as you repeat the idea throughout the day to appreciate your mind's holiness. Stand aside, however brief, from all the thoughts that are unworthy of him who hosts, whose host you are, and thank him for the thoughts that he's thinking with you. So we're going to go ahead and practice this. God is the mind in which I think. So we're going to close our eyes and think this thought. God is the mind in which I think. God is the mind in which I think. And then let any relevant thoughts around that come to you. And then as we entertain these thoughts around God is the mind in which I think, we're going to go ahead and dip in deeper to meditation and just be in meditation for three to five minutes. And here we go.
So I'm not sure if that was three minutes or five minutes or a million minutes. <laughs> but however long it is, it's so good for us to practice to be still and to connect with these, th these thoughts because they actually are so beneficial to our nervous system. All healing happens in the mind. So when the mind can be still and when the mind can be in peace, the body responds to it. And so when we think all of these alternative thoughts away from God, we can these jagged thoughts, these fearful thoughts, these anxious thoughts, they are what outpicture in our bodies. So, um, you know, think about babies. Babies come into the world with really two very clear emotions. They are either in love or they're in fear. And you know exactly how they feel all the time. They're in complete alignment. They're not saying one thing and pretending another. You know, they have not begun to create all the varieties of fear. They're not thinking anxious thoughts. They're not thinking guilt thoughts. They're not thinking depressed thoughts. <laughs> you know, a baby cannot be depressed. A baby does not feel guilt about anything. Oh, I kept you up all night. I feel so bad. <laughs> so, um... So we have to start surrendering all of those thoughts, all of those um, anxious, all of the ideas of depression. And today we ask Jesus and the Holy Spirit to help us to sink into God and sink into love and to give up the struggle and just allow ourselves to be floating in God and allow the gentle thoughts of God to have their way with us. And to allow ourselves to be taken into the waters of God and to allow ourselves to strip off of all these old ideas, these old concerns, these old anxieties, these old depressions that need not be so that we can be with the thoughts of God. And there will we find our true peace and there will we find our true strength and where there will we find our true freedom. And that is what I am invested in today. So thanks for joining me. Have a beautiful day. And don't forget to practice two more times today because again, it will serve you, it will serve your spiritual um, foundation, and it will also serve you know, your body and your world. God bless.